Tonight, starring Ida Lupino. Can't you get this through your head once and for all? Harry's dead. Dead and in his grave. Dead? Harry. Harry? He's dead. Dead and buried. Harry? Harry? He's dead. Singer. Outstanding leader in the manufacture of sewing machines for both industry and the home. Always look for the famous singer and Red S trademarks. Tonight on Four Star Playhouse, we present Ida Lupino in That Woman. Real quick, you know your pa's coming. Is she coming with him? Of course she ain't coming. Oh, but she'd be coming here for. Well, with Uncle Harry dead, I thought she might be coming to live with us for a while till she gets over grieving. How can you be figuring out things for people you never even seen? Now be still. If Pa tells me anything about her, I'll tell you after he goes up to bed. Does he put the car away? I want that sick man now for your mother. I did everything, Pa. Just like you would have. I fed, and I milked, and I think I got about 10 rows of corn put in. Jesse, when I was 16, my father was already dead. I was running the whole farm by myself. Well, was it a good funeral? There's nothing good about burying your own brother. Well, was there lots of people at the service? Church was full. The folks in town must have liked her then. They probably come to see that she had sense enough to bury him decent. Did you tell her why I didn't come? I'd have wanted to think we're hard-hearted people. I told her. I'll have your supper hot in a couple of minutes. You better put on an extra plate. Who on earth for? For her. For Flo? Was she coming here? Oh, but why? Ain't got no place else to go. Well, what about her own folks? Ain't got one. Often when she was little. To keep her around for a while if things get straightened out. She'll be able to pay her own way as soon as the lawyers finish selling Harry's drugstore. Well, I reckon I'd better open a jar of peaches or something. Oh, sure be nice to have another woman around to talk to. What she like, Pa? You know what? One of those women who dye the hair yellow. She had enough paint on her face to paint the barn. Even wore it to the funeral. I never thought Harry would marry with a woman like that. You think you should let her come here? Think it's bad for Jesse? What'd be bad for me? Eavesdropping on things that ain't meant for your ears. Your Aunt Flo's gonna be here in a little bit. She's we're gonna come to live with us. Maybe that's her coming down the road. I saw a taxi cab coming, but it was so dark I couldn't see who was in it. Should I go and greet her? She'll be able to find her own way in. The man's unloading two boxes and a suitcase. Is she paying him? She should have enough money for that. I reckon so. He's going. What's she look like? I can't see. Oh, but she's coming in. I'm real happy to meet you. Seems funny you being married to Pa's brother two years and us not meeting and you just in at the county seat. Well, Harry always says if you can't get along, get out. Oh, but gee, I don't know why he hated it here so. It looks real nice. Harry was always going to live in the city. Now look what it done for him. This is our boy, Jesse. Jesse, you go get your Aunt Flo's boxes and take them up to the spare room. 
It isn't a very nice room. If I knew you was coming, I could have fixed it up a little bit, maybe. Oh, that don't matter. I got lots of pretty little things in my boxes. Harry always buys me something once a week. And when we went to the carnival, I want a red scarf with fringe on it. Where's my supper? I'll dish it up. Now, you just sit here. Uh, Jessie sits there, and I sit here. But if you don't mind, I'm not very hungry. I would like a cup of coffee, though. Oh, sure. Coffee will boil up in just a minute. Aren't you and Jesse gonna eat? Jesse and me ate before you came. I could eat again. Jesse, finish what you're doing. It's, it's real friendly here. Homey and friendly. I like it when the lamps are lighted. It makes everything look kind of yellow and warm. Thank you. In this house, we say grace. Oh, Lord, make us grateful for that which we were about to receive. Help me and mine to stay away from the temptations of sin. Those who live in my house conduct themselves the way the Bible says they should. We say grace at meals, and we go to church on Sundays. And if you brought a black dress in one of those boxes of yours, get it out for tomorrow. I'm sorry, I don't have no black dress. Harry always likes me to wear lots of colors. Folks around here expect the widow to grieve decently. This is sure as heavy. Oh, boy, I hope none got broke. Oh, these are the things I took from the drugstore. Oh, I didn't take anything worth anything. They're just samples. You see, each month, the different companies send out little bottles of perfume, or just a few drops, to give away to the customers so they'll come back and buy a full bottle. Harry helps me shake them all into one jar. We mix all the scents together, and they smell real good. I've got two quarts of the stuff with me. I'd be glad to give you some. We don't bother with that sort of thing around here. The only smells for farm people are farm smells and honest sweat and soap. That's enough for decent people. I had a bottle of rose water once when I was a girl, and it smelled real pretty. It ain't that I don't like to smell nice, it's just that, well, what money you get on a farm sure ain't gonna buy perfume. But since you didn't have to pay for it, and you're offering it, sure. When you're through, Jesse will show you where your room is. Good night. You know, I never had no family till Harry. It's very nice of you to take me in. Good night. that sister-in-law of yours all through the service. And I must say, she don't seem to be taking Harry's death very hard. She sat there dry-eyed as could be. Even when Reverend Barlow said how much we all sympathized with her loss. But she didn't seem to know what he was talking about. I looked over at her once, and she was smiling to herself, like she was playing some kind of a kid's game. Well, I don't think she heard a word the minister said. Well, I don't think Flo's ready to believe yet that Harry's really dead. As she was doing the dishes this morning, she was whispering and giggling and carrying on just like there was somebody there helping her. Oh, they must have had a lot of fun together. They must have been happy, just like a couple of kids. She looks to me like the kind that might go clean out of her mind. You gotta face facts in this world. And all that bleached hair. If I was you, I'd get her to stop using that stuff. You know what the men around here will be thinking about her. I think your man's kind of rushing things, ain't he? He's over there introducing her to the only two single men in the church. Well, he, he just wants her to be known here, that's all. She won't get married till she's had a decent time for mourning. But then she'll have to find somebody. We can't keep her. Well, it was very nice meeting you, Mr. Grundle. Say, when you're in at the county seat, you must drop by our drugstore. We got all the latest things. And we're getting in a real nice line of men shaving lotion soon. Well, so long. Oh, Jesse, are you going to walk home with me?
Why'd you say that about the drugstore? You know you ain't there no more. No, of course I'm not, am I? I'm visiting with you and your folks. But you know, Harry teaches me to say that everywhere I go. Helps build up our business. I guess I don't know anything else to say. Now, yeah, Walt Grundle looked at you like he could eat you up. He's a fat toad. I bet you if I took a sharp stick and punched him right in the stomach, all the air would go out of him like a balloon. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, you're a scream, you know that. I gotta tell Harry about you. He'll die laughing. How can you tell Uncle Harry anything? He's dead. This could be you, a modern young housewife, a pretty young mother. And isn't it true? that within that person you seem to be, there's another you. A wonderful, creative creature who would love the opportunity to express herself in some sort of artistic fashion. But it is a busy world, and young married women like you are perhaps the busiest people in it. But wait, what if that artistic feeling could be expressed in something with a practical side, too? Would that make you happy? Then look at this. It's the wonderful new Singer Automatic Sewing Machine that does hundreds and hundreds of fashion stitches completely automatically that will let you create beautiful, exciting fashions for you, for your family. Yes, the Singer Automatic Sewing Machine that will bring out the fashion designer in you. Imagine clothes like this. So easy with the new Singer Automatic Sewing Machine. Choose any standard pattern you like, create a design to trim it, and your Singer Automatic translates it into a personal triumph, into a dress that becomes not just another dress, but a fashion first, designed by you. Yes, imagine, hundreds of lovely decorative stitches. Your Singer Automatic does them all. Sports shirts take on a really expensive look when you finish them with details like these. And children's clothes are even sweeter and more delightful when you embroider them the modern Singer way. Yes, your Singer Automatic makes you a fashion designer. And yet, does straight stitching and those everyday practical jobs, too. The wonderful new Singer Automatic Sewing Machine, made as only Singer can make it. To turn you into a fashion designer. To make you that wonderful, creative person you've always wanted to be. Stop in at your Singer Sewing Center and see it soon. Well, I didn't do very good, did I? Look, there's hardly any milk at all in the pail. You'll get better. Well, I want to, because your pa says I should earn my keep. And I always have wherever I've been. Yeah, I've got to learn to do things like a regular farmer's wife does. Are you going to be a farmer's wife? Of course not, Jessie. I'm Harry's wife. But Harry's... You don't know what Harry's done for me. Pa says if, if you don't start playing games with yourself and face up to things, you're going to go crazy and they'll put you in the insane asylum. You know what Harry said to me the day we was married? He said I was pretty. Real pretty. I guess you... You must be about the prettiest girl in the whole world now. Hmm. Oh, say, do you like my ring? Harry gave that to me on my birthday. Of course, it isn't real, but it sure looks it, don't it? <laughs> oh, Jesse, you know something. When you come to town, you just got to come and stay with us in our little apartment. We'll have such fun together. You and me and Harry. Flo going to the Harders with you? No. I didn't even say anything to her about old Granny Harder dying. She's had enough of dying for a while. I'd have told her. Be a good thing for her to see somebody laying dead. Now, Jesse, I want you to stay right in here. Your pa is just going to walk me down to Harder's, and he'll be right back, and I don't want her to come downstairs and find the house empty. She might be afraid.
Oh, why, Jesse, it's you. And I thought it was Jack. Jack who? But Jack Norton, one of our best friends. He's the salesman that always brings me the perfume samples. This is his week to be in town. He always spends his evenings with us. Us? Well, sure, Harry and me, of course, silly. Who'd you think? But, gee, I'm glad you came, Jesse. Because we're going to play canaster, and it's a much better game with four. Sit down, honey. Oh, not there, Jesse. You're going to sit in your Uncle Harry's lap. And he's not feeling too well today. Uncle Harry? Well, surely you remember your Uncle Harry, don't you? Oh, but then I guess you weren't very big when he left the farm. Well, you get to know each other all over again. Sit down, honey. And shuffle. Oh, but don't deal until Jack gets here. Oh, boy, are you going to like him? Maybe he won't come here. Of course he will. You know, he says our little apartment here up above the drugstore is the happiest place he knows. <laughs> Don't he, honey? <laughs> Oop, that must be him now. I'll let him in. Jack, come on in. We've been waiting for you. Oh, Don't put your hat on the bed. It's bad luck. I'll take it. Uh, Jack, you can sit over there. I'd like you to meet our nephew, Jesse. He's come all the way in from the country just to play cards with us. Isn't that nice? Well, go on, shake his hand. Glad to know you, Mr. Norton. Oh, call him Jack. Everybody does. All right, Jess, you can deal now. Say, Jack, business is getting better than ever. We're getting new customers every day, and even the old ones are coming back. If things keep up this way, we'll be paid off in a year. Then do you know what? We're going to put in one of those new soda fountains, and I'm going to run it. Aren't I, honey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Harry got me a new record today. Oh, you got to hear it. Hey, Jack, how about us taking a whirl, huh? You don't mind, do you, honey? I'm a good dancer, just flat as me. You are good. Very good. Jack! Okay, okay, you've had enough. Go on, sit down. Jess, come on, it's yours. Oh, no, I couldn't. Sure you can. Get up on your feet, I'll teach you. Now, you just relax. Put your hand here. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Harry, you better watch out or you're going to lose me, honey. You're going to. <laughs> no, I'm not. Come on, put up your feet. <laughs> oh, watch this, Jack. This is real good. <laughs> And pretending we're having a party. Her and me and, and Jack and, and that's Uncle Harry in the chair. Uncle Harry? Has she got you crazy too? Oh, we were... Jackie, get out of here! Woman, can't you get it through your head once and for all? Harry's dead! Dead and in his grave! Dead? Oh, no. No, Harry's not dead. Oh, he's sitting right there. Harry died. I wouldn't have nobody. Harry. Harry. He's dead. Dead and buried. Harry. Harry. He's dead. He wouldn't stay here on the farm with me. No. He wanted to go to the city. And no. all those poisons in there killed him. No. He's dead. No. Dead. No. no. Harry's dead. Oh, Harry's dead. Harry. Harry. Well, this is the last one. Freeze, we'll get the 
rest. Hey, Pa. I want you to talk to Flo. What do you want me to say to her? Well, whatever you said to her that night after Granny Harder died, I want you to take it back. In a month, she's got ten years older. She's just working herself to death. I want her back the way she was. She won't pay no attention to me. She hates me. You were determined to have Harry dead. I didn't kill him. You did for her. You know what she's becoming. Another me. Another tired old farm woman. We ain't got no right to do that to her, not for Harry's sake. What are you going to do about it? Another letter came for her today from that lawyer down at the county seat. Well, she never opens them. She just puts them up on that shelf. Flo, another letter came for you today from that lawyer down at the county seat. Better read it. Don't make no difference one way or the other. Maybe he found somebody to buy the drugstore. Well, so either he sold it and paid what's owed, or he hasn't sold it and they're still owed. You ought to know what he has to say. Look, if you want to know what he has to say, why don't you read it yourself? It's your letter. Well, go ahead then, read it, read it. All right. Well, for him to say, what's it say? Oh. Well, this lawyer says he's found somebody to buy the store for enough for Flo to make a little profit. But there's a hitch. He don't want it unless you can go back and work there like you used to. Why don't they leave me alone? I'm safe here. I'm trying to tell myself that everything was just as it was before, Harry. I'm trying to forget, aren't I? Well, all right, so I'm not going back there where I'm going to be reminded of him every minute of the day. I'm just not going back. All right. I'll write and tell the lawyer to sell the drugstore if he can, but that you ain't part of the stock. That fellow that wrote about buying the drugstore, he's come out, he wants to talk to you. Says he couldn't wait for no answer from your letter. Paul's taking him in the parlor. Won't you come and talk to him? No, Jesse. No, you tell your pa to talk to him for me. Why can't you come? Tell him he can have the drugstore. Yeah, he and his wife can live in our little apartment up above it. She can have my job of unpacking all the merchandise, putting all the pretty perfume bottles on the little glass shelves. They'll have a great time. Because it's a lot of fun when you work together. But I don't want to see him. I don't want to think of them in Harry's place. Would it hurt so much to see me in Harry's place? Jack. <sighs> Jack. I was in Chicago when a friend wrote me about Harry. I wrote your letter. Why didn't you answer me? Was that letter from you? Oh, I didn't even read it. I will now. I, I should have come right away, but I wanted to give you time to get back on your feet. I was going to wait a year, but... But I was afraid you might drift away. Oh, Flo, there was so much happiness there. I'm sure there's some left. No, I, I, I couldn't go back there. You see, Jack, I learned you got to bury the dead. Harry would be everywhere for me. But he'd be there for me, too. Oh, Flo, remember the three of us, how happy we were, how we laughed and played cards, how good it was? The best times of my life were spent in that flat. Now there's... There's just the two of us. But I can't help thinking that there's something left for us there. I... I know you don't love me, Flo, not yet. Maybe you never will the way you did Harry. But there are lots of kinds of love. And I'll love you enough for both of us until... until you find one of them. Flo... Flo, come back to the store with me now. Flo, shall I pack some of your things for you? You know, I always said you had the hands of a lady. You're gonna have to let your nails grow and paint them that pretty red again. You know, I saw a woman in Chicago, a, a Mrs. Palm, a real society. Her hands weren't nearly as nice as yours. Oh, Jack. 
All right. You got yourself a deal. I'll come on back. Oh. Jesse. Look. Well, you know I... I love you in a special sort of way. And you know I gotta go back, don't you? I'd sure like you to have this ring. Maybe you can give it to your girl someday, huh? preview of next week's play after this message from Bristol Myers. Action! In the stress of active living, everybody perspires. Everybody wants a deodorant that really works. And here it is, new Mum Mist that sprays up to 1,800 tiny deodorant shields on every inch of skin it touches. And each tiny shield of Mum Mist contains odor-stopping hexachlorophene for protection you never thought possible. Look, the magic of slow-motion photography shows that the spray from Mum Mist is much finer compared with a leading spray deodorant. This finer spray makes sure that hexachlorophene protects the entire skin area. And Mum Mist dries in seconds, so no messy liquid runs down your side. Mum Mist covers every inch with up to 1,800 tiny deodorant shields to stop perspiration for hours, to stop odor all day. Get Mum Mist and let those tiny deodorant shields protect you. Next week on Bristol Myers' four-star playhouse, Charles Boyer will star in a moving melodrama of love and intrigue. As a gentle professor who becomes involved in a murder plot, Mr. Boyer gives one of his most memorable performances. Next week on Bristol Myers' four-star playhouse. respects no age or social standing. Last year, Miss Susan Ball, beautiful young actress, was fatally stricken with this dread disease. A fund to aid cancer research and cancer victims has been formed in her memory. Please give to the Susan Ball Memorial Fund and carry of your local postmaster. <laughs>